Hello and welcome to another ARC tutorial. Today we're going to cover five topics everyone should know before they start playing on Lost Island, including base locations, resource and creature spawns, artifact locations, and some general tips. Make sure you stick around to the end for a bonus tip on how to get the best gear on the map. First, let's cover base locations. There are a lot of incredible places on Lost Island, and with it being one of the biggest maps Ark has ever known, it's really easy to miss some of them. The place I like the most is this cave at 3130, right under the castle in the snow. The reason it's my favorite is because of its easily defendable choke point, as well as its proximity to high value resources. Right outside the entrance to the cave is one of the few places to find beaver dams, and to be honest, there are quite a few here. Certainly enough to get a solo player started. Move just a bit past that and there are roughly 7 metal nodes that you can continue to farm until you're sick of it, and in the same area you'll find plenty of obsidian as well. The cave itself is home to a decent crystal deposit, but remember that if you build too close to it, you'll only be able to farm it once. The next location I want to cover is the Castle in the Snow, basically on top of the aforementioned cave at 3129. While this certainly isn't the easiest to defend, it's a lovely spot for PvE players because of its size and unique design. There's space for farms, full-scale breeding operations, and turrets for miles. In terms of resources, your best bet is to utilize the resources from the cave base I mentioned previously. However, since you're in the snow, there's a lot of snow-covered metal nodes you'll be able to harvest as well. With this being perched atop a pillar of land, once you get your hands on a cinema crops, so you'll be able to glide to a ton of different locations on the map in one go. There's only a single land bridge connecting it to the rest of the world, so if you can cover the natural blind spots that turrets will have, you'll have a wonderful location. I've mentioned a lot about turrets, but let's be real here. This is not an ideal location for PvP, as caves provide fewer opportunities for survivors to break in. Anyway, let's talk about the Redwoods Castle at 4454. This place is just so damn beautiful. There's so much more space than any one player could ever need, but unfortunately it's very difficult to defend from raiders because of multiple access points and natural blind spots for turrets. It's pretty much a dream for PvE players though, because each of these buildings can house something unique if you want to go that route, or you can live in the castle pillars and have vertical layers for the things you need. There's a wonderful cave just outside the castle that has something like 10 or more metal nodes in it, as well as a massive crystal deposit. I brought a magmasaur here and ended up with approximately 10,000 metal per run. With it being so close to the castle, this is definitely the spot to go for if you're looking to farm a ton of resources. It's also quite central in terms of base locations. While it is slightly southeast, it's hard to find a better spot nearer to the center with the same resource advantages as the Redwoods Castle. Next up, I want to talk about the Aztec Village at 2241. Is this actually an Aztec village? I don't know, I'm uncultured, but it looks ridiculously awesome regardless. The monarchs turned this into a trading post, but this would be an absolutely amazing place for a tribe space. With it being in the heart of a jungle, it's difficult to find unless you're flying or already know about it. This is certainly not a great spot for PvP unless you're really skilled and know exactly how to defend it, and to be fair, it's not that great of a spot for PvE either because resources are few and far between. However, this is arguably the coolest spot on the the entire map and can end up being one of those bases that said can help but put in the community crunch if it's done right. Don't hesitate to check it out and see if it's right for you. I do have one last super secret base location, but it's probably the best PvP cave on the map, so I don't want to explicitly give it away, just to keep it a viable option. It's commonly referred to as Crouch Cave, so here are some clips of it without coordinates. This cave forces raiders to crouch to get inside, hence the name and the reason it's one of the best you can get. Good luck! I hope you can find it! Next up, we've got resource locations. We went over a few of them in the previous section, so let's go over everything we missed. First up, we've got silica pearls. Silica pearls can be farmed in abundance at the end of this river, starting at 63.5, 74.7. As soon as you're underwater, it's easy to see that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of silica pearls to be taken. There aren't too many creatures to worry about either. Just you, silica pearls, and some scuba gear. And honestly, a Maywing to get you through the bare spots and to carry the pearls for you. Next up, we've got black pearls, and for as valuable a resource as black pearls are, they're incredibly easy to collect on this map. Come over to this lake at 3964, definitely with scuba and a maywink to carry everything, and just start collecting. The pond is right next to the geysers by the volcano. Just follow this little stream down and you'll find it. Next on the list of resources, we have beaver dams, which provide cementing paste. There are a few at the first base location I mentioned earlier, but the best spot, in my opinion, is through this river and that river's branches. I can't really give quartz because it's such a broad area, but here's where I I am on the map, and here's the beaver dam. This main river has a ton of branches that are really easy to navigate, so do that and profit. Next, you'll probably need oil at some point, and the best place to collect
collect that is near the volcano in this really weird oily biome. These nodes will give you oil and lots of it. I recommend using a mining drill here. Lastly, if you head out to the desert, you can get cactus sap by mining these cacti and organic polymer by killing mantis and harvesting them with a chainsaw. With resources out of the way, we can move on to creature spawns. I'm gonna be honest with you. The fastest way to find where creatures spawn is to go to the Ark Wiki and find the creature spawn map. It's the first place I go to when I'm on a new map, but it can be difficult to get precise locations, which is why I'm here. Anyway, let's go over the spawn locations for the creatures that are unique to Lost Island. First, we've got the Dinopithecus. This one is found all over the Redwoods. Seriously, they're everywhere. It's super annoying because they hit really hard and spawn in packs of five or more sometimes. Head to the Redwoods Castle if you're struggling to find them. Next, we've got the Amargosaurus. These guys can be found anywhere with lava and anywhere with snow. So head to the volcano or the mountains for them. Lastly, we have the Cinema Crops. These can be found in the jungles of Lost Island, but the place I go to that seems to work well for me is the Aztec village I mentioned earlier. Of course, this wouldn't be a Lost Island map without talking about the Wyvern trend Inches located at 34, 37, where you can find ice wyverns, and 32, 64, where you can find fire and lightning wyverns. Next up, we've got maywings, which can be found pretty abundantly throughout the plains biome, which is also where you'll find gigas. In addition to finding gigas in the plains, they can be found on the plateau near the first cave base I mentioned, kind of by those obsidian deposits. Next up, you can find manas all over the snow biome, but a great place to start looking is near the Ice Wyvern Trench. They're usually accompanied by the other difficult creatures you'll find in the snow, but that just comes with the territory. The last creature I want to mention is the Magmasaur, whose eggs can be found in this cave. It's honestly relatively easy to get in and out, especially if you have a cinema crops, so don't be afraid to get there early. Next, let's talk about the artifact caves. There are a lot of them, and some can get pretty complicated, so I won't be going over how to complete them, I'll just be going over where they are. Besides, half the fun of the game is exploring, so let's not spoil too much. First artifact we're talking about today is the Artifact of the Brute, and that can be located at 88.8, 80.6 in the southeast of the desert. It is kind of just in the middle of the desert, but you'll have to find this little canyon here. Here are some surroundings. Good luck with this one. Next up, we've got the Artifact of the Clever, located at 2741 in the northern part of the map, in the jungle. This one is underwater. You'll have to look for this kind of landmark archway thing here. Land on this rock, jump under the water, and boom, there's the cave. Good luck. Next up, we've got the Artifact of the Cunning. Now, you can use the coordinates you see on screen now. However, this one is best located by using landmarks. You see this big land bridge here? Just to the left of the land bridge is the entrance to the cave. Once again, that is big land bridge here and there's the entrance to the cave it's much easier to do this by landmarks than by coordinates good luck the next cave has both the artifacts of the devious and the artifact of the massive this one is located at 6246 make sure you're looking for these four rocks in this specific formation in the swamp simply dive down right in the middle of them follow the little underwater canyon until you reach this cave this one is a doozy best of luck to you Next up, we've got the Artifact of the Devourer, located at 82.1, 15.4. Find these little cool islands, dive straight down, you'll find a sunken shipwreck. It is a bit of a puzzle to get the artifact out, but here's a hint. Good luck. Next up, we've got the Artifact of the Hunter, and this one actually has two entrances. However, it's just one big tunnel, so it's pretty easy. If you come out to 36.2, 9.4, you'll find this little area, and this is a big tunnel. You can pick which side you want to go in on, but halfway through this tunnel is a cave with an artifact in it, so good luck. Next, we've got the Artifact of the Immune, and I'm going to be honest with you, this one is a little bit tricky to find. You have to find the Volcano and Red Ob, then find these little five rocks, kind of line it up into this little canyon cavern thing. And on the left side of that in the little canyon cavern thing is a cave with an artifact in it. So try and use both coordinates and landmarks to find this one as again, it is a little bit tricky, but once you get there, good luck. Next up is the artifact of the pack. And honestly, this one is super easy to find. It's right near the first cave location I talked about in the base location section. The cave is right there. The obsidian deposits are right here. Giga spawn here. And then you just go a little bit further and boom, here is the cave entrance. There are a couple other cave entrances you can find, but this is definitely the easiest. Next, we've got the Artifact of the Skylord, and this one is pretty random. If you go to Green Ob, you find this stagnant little pond, and follow the river down to this waterfall. Just go inside the waterfall, and blam, there's your cave. Let's go! Last but not least, we've got the Artifact of the Strong, located at 28.2, 54.1. This one is relatively easy to find because this river leads from the snow, down into the swamp basically and there's this weird texture of ice 
that really signifies where the cave entrance is. So all you have to do is find that weird thing and then go in the first waterfall that's right underneath it. And you have one of the best caves actually on the whole map. So have fun, good luck. Finally, let's talk about some general tips and things to remember. Lost Island is a huge map. You absolutely need a Maywing and a Cinema Crops. Prioritize them like your life depends on it. You'll thank me later, I promise. Next, there are a ton of creatures on the map that will help you be the best survivor possible, so don't forget about them. The Magmasaur is a great harvester, and the mana is and has been great for PvP. There are a few Labyrinth Caves I mentioned earlier that should not be underestimated by any means. Definitely check out other creators' videos to guide you through them unless you have just unbelievable patience. Don't underestimate the loot drops on this map either. Sure, there are better loot drops on other maps like Aberration, but Lost Island makes getting ridiculously good blueprints easier than ever before with the Desert Loot Cave. Other than that, the map is relatively straightforward and doesn't introduce many unique environmental threats beyond what you've seen with other maps. That being said, thank you you so much for your time today leave a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next video